hi there and welcome to this video today i'm going to show you how we can leverage natural language to interact with power bi semantic models and automate workflows using the power bi modeling mcp server we're going to automate workflows by using the natural language to list columns create dimension table measures and all sorts of things in our power bi desktop report so let's get started now before we jump into the practical side of things Let's understand what is Power BI Modeling MCP Server. It is basically a local server that connects an AI agent with Power BI semantic models, which enable use of natural language driven modeling changes and autonomous workflows. This means the Power BI Modeling MCP Server acts as a bridge between the large language models or an AI agent and the Power BI semantic model layer, which allow developers to interact programmatically with data sets automate modeling tasks and integrate intelligent workflows into business intelligence solutions. Now, let's understand what is MCP. It basically stands for Model Context Protocol. and uh, It's an open source lightweight standard that lets AI agents and applications securely connect to external tools and data sources in a consistent way. Having understood all these terms, let's jump into the practical side of things. So, in our case, I've got this Fin report Power BI desktop, and of course, I'm going to use the built in financials data set. So, I just have all of this, so nothing is created except all the default columns, such as cost of goods sold, country, date, and so on and so forth. So, we need to install the favorite IDE that is the independent development environment. So, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the favorite VS Code editor. So, you need to download and install in your local laptop if you have not done so. So for me, I've got that already installed. So this is my VS Code editor. Now, we need to go ahead and install the Power BI Modern MCP server from the extensions marketplace of the VS Code editor. So you want to come here and you want to search for Power BI Modern MCP server. Click on that and just go ahead and click on install. So this is already installed in my VS Code editor and we are good to go. So we can see under the details, the Power BI Modeling MCP server brings Power BI semantic modeling capabilities to your AI agent through a local MCP server. And this allows developers and AI applications to interact with Power BI models in an entirely new way from using natural language to execute modeling changes to autonomous AI agentic development workflows. So. We also need to install the GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to come here and get rid of this and search for the GitHub Copilot. So click on that and you need to also install this. And then you also need to install this GitHub Copilot chart. So once you install all these three programs, then we are good to go. So at the top, you can see we've got this chart. So just go ahead and click on this and then we can create a new chart. We can open a quick chart. We can create in a new editor, in a new window and so on. So we want to go ahead and click on open a chart based on what we love. I can close this for now. I don't need this. I can, of course, close this. Now we can do so some things such as expand so that we can see all of this. So we've got this build with agent and then we can see this which shows all the previous charts based on how many you've used and then we have this you know settings or this cog which allows us to customize agents also provide prompt files chart instructions generate chart instructions and we have the mcp servers the two sets and of course we can also configure the chart settings so we can always play with all of this and see how they work so let's get to business and see how we can begin to programmatically interact with our power bi desktop reports now in order to see what's going on i'm going to double click on this at the top right left hand corner so that this is actually broken into two and then i'm going to click on my power bi and use the window left arrow key and then we can see the two windows displayed cool so we are ready to go so the first thing we want to do is to establish connection to our power bi report so i'm going to come here now before we do that we have some other things we can add a context and then we have this agent which is automatically you know selected for you and then we can also choose the modeling or the model we want to use we can use chat gbt5 mini and so on and so forth but usually you're going to see that in the auto so i can put it back in auto and 
I can just allow the chart to determine which of the model to use. And of course, when I click on this, we can see the configure tools. And it is really important you come here because we don't want to use what is not necessary. So let me just call out this in the built in, and then we can see we have this Azure MCP. So we are not interested in Azure MCP, we're just interested in the Power BI MCP. So we're going to see the Power BI as it comes up. So I'm going to toggle this one off. I don't need this for now. So let's come here and I'm going to click on OK. Now let's go ahead and give you prompt to connect to our Power BI desktop. So I'm going to type in connect to my open thin underscore report Power BI desktop. Now I'm going to type this correctly so this can be understood. So just go ahead and press enter and then the agent starts working so we can see activating MCP servers. So I'm just going to wait for some couple of moments and we're going to see that we are able to establish connection to our Power BI report, which is open. All right, so we can see listing local Power BI desktop instances to find fin report. So we can see we've got this run connection operations, and then we can see the input and of course the output. Now you can see I've got this auto approved for this profile. So this simply means I don't have to approve each of the operation that has been performed. So I can, for example, click on this edit, and it's gonna take me to this Power BI modeling MCP. So when I expand this, I can see I've got this run any tool without approval. So I've actually ticked this boss by giving the auto approve so that I don't have to approve all of this one after the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then we can see this has now been connected. So we can see all of these green check marks. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and voila connected successfully. So we can see the connection summary, the name, which is Power BI, Fin report, and then we can see the part, which is 54197, and then we can see the database ID, session ID, and status is online because this is currently open. And then we can see the next step that the chart is trying, to, the agent is trying to perform for us. So we can run DAX queries, we can export metadata using the TMDL or the TMSL for fashioning or migration. We can start a trace, we can begin transaction, list models, and so on and so forth. So this is cool. Now let's just you know, play with some of the basics. Let's just say we want to list all the columns, all the columns in the financials table. Now, don't forget, we have the name of the table, which is financials, and then we want to list all the columns. So let me just put in an S A and press enter. Yeah, amazing. So we are able to return all the list of columns in the financials table. So you can see we have this raw number and which is automatically generated. We have this internal index, and then we have the segment country to the year column. Absolutely awesome. So let's go ahead and ask this question. So we want to create a date dimension table from the financials table named dim date. The dim date must contain the following columns, date, year, month, number, month, name. So this should be month, name. And then month, number, day of week, quarter, fiscal year, fiscal quarter and fiscal period. So you can see, I don't have this table, but we want to just go ahead and create this workflow. So once I provide this prompt, I can just go ahead and press enter and the AI will get to work. And in some couple of moments, we should see the new table created. Amazing. So now we need to give approval in order to be able to perform this next operation. So you can see, are you sure you want to perform operations that will modify your database? So this is going to make the changes. So we're happy for this demonstration. So click on respond. And then in the configure the operation, we can see we can continue by clicking on this. Yes, continue the operation. So we can see the confirmed operation has been noted. And then I'm going to wait for the response. So we can say create dim date as a table. And it's going to be performing the eight of 10 steps. Now, as that's going on, I can click on this and I can see what has been done. So we have this list local Power BI instances, connects to FIN report, validate connection details, report next action, the activate semantic models, retrieve financial columns, and we can see we have this draft dim date DAX, create dim date, and so on. Now you can see what happened. So we have the dim date as a table created. 
and that is beautiful so let me just you know wait in order for all of these you know steps that is these two steps to be completed and then we can check this out now this is actually performing a live workflows automation without having to write code I mean, everything is really fantastic so i can come here i can say completed create dim date table absolutely cool so there we go so we can see the columns are now present let me just move up a little bit so we can see what's going on here all right okay so we have all the columns and our present date year month name month number day of week quarter fiscal year fiscal period fiscal quarter and of course we have this assumption if we intend to go forward but let's come to our power and check it out so we have the dim date brilliant i can come to the table view and we have all the unique dates that is coming from our date column in the financial table and then we have the year column extracted and of course we have the month name month number day of week quarter fiscal year fiscal period and fiscal quarter and when you look at this code this is absolutely pure class because this is the way we would have created it anyway so this is actually correct now i'm going to come to the model view and then we can see that we need to create the relationship between the fact and the dim date so i can just drag this across to the date column here and i can see now i've got this different date format here and of course i've got a different date format this is the short and this is the long now when i try to click on save this is not going to work fine so i'm going to come here to the financials and then click on the date column and i'm going to come to the report again click on the date column and then in the column tools contextual ribbon tab under the formatting i'm going to come here and use the short date formatting and i can come back to the model view I can drag across and create the many to one relationship and click on save and voila we have the many to one relationship now we're able to create this dim date using the amazing natural language now i'm going to come in and just minimize this so that we can see the vs code editor on the right hand side so let's come here and create a disconnected DAX measure table in the fin report named my DAX measure. So I'm just going to give for the instruction don't create any measure inside the my DAX measure disconnected table. So you can see we've got only the financials and then the dim data. So I just just go ahead and press enter and then we wait for the AI agent to get to work. And in a matter of Maybe in one minute or thereabouts, we're going to see the disconnected table. So we can see what's going on. So thinking, creating DAX measure table. So we're just going to wait for all of this um, to execute. And then we can see we have all the previous steps. So previously we had eight. So this has grown from 11 to 13. So draft measure table DAX. And we can see create my DAX. You can see what's going on. Amazing. Boom. So this is just in flow in to so my DAX measure is just arriving now. This is life. Absolutely fantastic. So you don't need to do so much of stress. And I love this. So again, I'm just going to wait for all the to-do steps to be completed. And then we can come back to the Power BI desktop to check it out. But as this is going on, we can see, just like I mentioned before, we have the auto approved for this profile. So this allows us to perform multiple operations without having to give an approval at each end of us. So we see the table, my DAX measure is not created. And you can see the type calculated, no relationship disconnected and we can say column dummy single place order because we must have a place order column in there and then we have to measure no measure as requested brilliant now i'm going to come here and i can expand this so we have the dummy place order column and we have the disconnected table okay so i'm going to minimize this and let's come back to the chart now we want to go ahead and create some couple of measures so we want to create total sales total um, profit we also want to create total unit sold profit margin percentage and year on year sales percentage dax explicit measure inside the my dax measure disconnected table so let me just expand there. you can see we just have this dummy column so let's go ahead and run this prompt again we're going to just see 
Okay, let me just click on, let me get this one out. So it's going to get to work. And in about one minute or less, we're going to see all those measures created nice and easy without writing a single DAX measure by ourselves. So this is the automation that you know, we are talking about. Amazing. So you can see the measures are just coming in super, super fantastic. So we have the profit margin, total profit, total sales, and the total unit, and then we have the year-on-year -year sales. That is the same period of last year. Fantastic. So let's expand the Power BI and let's check them out just to make sure that these are correct. So let's see the total profit. So we can see we're just using the sum function to sum the profit column in the financial table. This is correct. And then we have the total sales. This is fine. The total unit is also fine. And then I'm going to come to the year-on-year -year sales percentage. That is the same period last year percentage. And then we have the calculation absolutely fantastic and correct and let's check the profit margin so this is correct we take the total profit divided by the total sales and it's going to give us the profit margin and we can use this in our calculation let's say we want to see the um, segment by total units total sales let's turn this to a table and i want to see this by profit I can expand and then we want to include the year on year sales percentage and then the profit margin just to see how they look like. And I mean, this is really you know, cool. Let's go ahead and minimize this and let's also use and let's create more measures. So in addition, also create the following DAX measures, average unit price and gross margin percentage. So I can go ahead and press enter. And again, we need to wait and we are going to see the new measures that we are supplying the chart to create for us amazing so we can see our measures are coming in fantastic so we can see we have the average unit price the gross margin all of the measures are now created and then we have this average unit price and the gross margin percentage so it's a good idea to always check them out but this looks so promising and with these, we don't have to do much. Of course, I love to write DAX and so on, but we can use the natural language to automate a lot of workflows without having to spend a lot of time. So I hope this is useful for you. And let me know in the comments how you're going to be using this on your job. So thank you for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.